Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Leader, I, uh, I appreciate all the comments. Um, I first want to thank uh, Speaker Hickman, Representative Nelson, Senator Sykes publicly for the hard work that's gone into this and a myriad of others. And I, I think that it's important to recognize and I respect the comments from, from both the, the senators that spoke about um, high standards. And I think there's, there's something we need to realize. Common Core is a grand experiment. Common Core is a grand experiment. And it's a grand experiment that we are being pushed on the front ledge and being asked to take this step of, of faith that we're going to um, have higher educational attainment if we step out there. So we probably ought to look at New York. New York is in chaos. We talk about chaos. We need to pay attention to what's happening in New York. The, the greatest determination of what will happen in the future is what's happened in the past. And New York is in absolute chaos. Went from 70% passage to 30% passage. They didn't do a good job, as Senator Sharp pointed out, of doing the professional development. Like Oklahoma, other than you know the 10 to 12 teacher uh, prep days that we go in and they, and they tell them go to corestandards.org. And that's where you can get the information. And teachers after school are on corestandards.org or the State Department website trying to figure their way through this maze and we're saying come August it's on you and I tell you we've done a real poor job and I, I will tell you that forecasting what happened in New York is what is very likely to happen in Oklahoma and if someone said the majority of schools have already embraced this well that's not the information I've gathered the information I've gathered is you start talking to teachers. Teachers have been sitting, teetering, wondering if they had the time to go to corestandards.org and delve into it. And we've sure not created the time for them to do that. I want to talk about uh, how we're being rawhided through the Common Core initiative. You remember Senator Rod asked to rawhide? Don't try to understand them, just rope and throw and brand them. You got a lot of math teachers, some of you are here in front of there saying, I don't understand these standards. How can I teach these 40 year teachers in the classroom? But we're saying, well, hey, just forget if you don't understand them, just do it. Trust us. 300 million, 300 uh, billion dollars investment from the ARRA federal stimulus dollars are gonna assess them and just trust us, they're better standards. Let's talk about what some of the experts have to say about the standards. Sandra Stotsky, who wrote the ELA standards for English language arts and math, or excuse me, ELA in, in Massachusetts, who was on the validation committee, said these are not high standards and refused to sign off on them. Stanford University, James Milgram on the math standards said these are, these are not high standards and refused to sign off of them because they were back math. They went to 12th grade and said this is what you're expected to know. And by the time they got to the early, the foundation years, they had a problem. We're about to launch out on a grand experiment. So we push the pause button, and I absolutely agree with what we should do with pushing the pause button. And we're not taking a step back. We are taking a step back cautiously saying we are about to find ourselves in chaos. It's a step forward. It's protecting our students. It's protecting our teachers. Well, I would say also in the bill, um, Senator Burns, I wish he was here. He'd asked me the last time if this bill had anything to do with RSA. Well, there is one more good cause exemption that the bill has included that um, says that if you were retained in kindergarten, you may now use that in the two years of retention to be promoted to the fourth grade. Legal staff from both the House and the Senate have reviewed this. I have the documentation. It's the opinion of the staff that changes all three bills, talking about another bill that did something similar, do not conflict, talking about the hinky Stanislavski bill, and therefore can be merged together and all three changes will become law. Go, one more good cause exemption you will find in this bill for retained kindergartners. And what about the Tenth Amendment? All powers relegated to the United States by the Constitution reserved to the states or the people therein. What about the Tenth Amendment? What do you do with that? Well, these are state-led standards. No, they're not state-led standards. Well, 
yeah, they are. Well, let's talk about, I'm going to steal from my colleague, um, Representative Nelson. If they're state-led standards, and on page 25 and 29 of this bill, when we say you, you, we can't do anything in, in, in creation of standards that ceded control to the federal government, then what's the issue with the bill? If we didn't, didn't cede control to an outside entity, then there should be nothing wrong with this bill. But apparently we have. And that's why this bill matters. And that's why maintaining independence on page 29 matters. Members, I'm going to leave you with one more thing. Now, I've questioned whether I do this or not, but I'm going to. There's a story in, in the Bible about Elijah on Mount Carmel, and he had to chastise his people. He said, choose this day who, who you're going to serve. Stop wavering between two opinions. I want to direct you to something. I think it'd be informative. I'm amazed that many people don't know this. So where our teachers are going to www.corestandards.org, they press, press the cursor on, the, on that website where it says read the standards on the right-hand column. And off on that webpage, if you want to follow along with me on Senate 4, you can do that right now. In the right-hand column of that webpage at corestandards.org, you will see blue lettered, read the, excuse me, in the right-hand column you'll see read the standards. Click on that. And then below that, you'll have a choice in blue letter to see English language arts standards. Click on that. Then you're going to see a yellow and orange list that's going to appear on the right side of the page. And at the very bottom of that list, you're going to see something that says English language arts. It gives you appendix A, B, and C. Choose B. I want you to, I want you to click on that. This is where our teachers are going to know what standards to submit to our students in the classroom. And you're going to find a PDF document. Take you about two or three minutes to pull that PDF up. And I want you to scroll to page 11. And then I want you to scroll to page 12. And you're going to read something right after you find To Kill a Mockingbird, which shouldn't you know, bother any of us for 10th, and 12th, 10th through 12th graders. But you're going to find something called The Bluest Eye. It's in your schools. It's in a school in my district. This is suggested reading to help students reach the highest mark on common core assessments because remember the whole point is for every state to be compared against themselves and so we're going to have model assessments paid for by the federal government and that's going to lead to model curriculum and what teacher who doesn't want the best the best scores on that test is not going to do everything they can to bring in this model curriculum big money Prentice Hall Pearson's and now instead of us worrying about the buying power of Texas, we've got the entire nation's buying power. Instead of us having a wall of standards for Oklahoma that somewhat more aligns with Texas than it definitely does New York or California, we're now subject to a lot more content and curricula to meet the standards. But it's just about standards, right? No. At corestandards.org on that page 11 and 12, that, that appendix I just told you about, the bluest eye. Let me, let me read you a little bit about the bluest eye. On page 162 to 163, it's going to be read to meet the ELA for 10th through 12th graders right now. If we come, come August, September, and October, this is what your students are going to be reading. A bolt of desire ran down his G-E-N-I-T-A-L-S, softening the lips of his A-N-U-S. He wanted her F-bomb, Tenderly, but the tenderness wouldn't hold. The tightness of her D, and I'll leave it to your imagination, was more than he could bear. His soul seemed to slip down his guts and fly. And I get so graphic, I can't even read that. And then the gigantic, he made, a, removing himself, he grabbed his genitals. That's, that's the bluest eye. I'm waiting for somebody to gavel me down, honestly. But we'll let it in our classrooms. Can't read it on the floor of the city, but we'll let it in our classrooms. Dreaming in Cuban is the next one on page 12. But folks, this is the core standards done where our teachers are going and our librarians are bringing the books aligned to Common Core so our teachers can get the best, for their students can have access to get the best scores on those tests. So you want you interested about the Dreaming Cuban? Hugo and Felicia stripped in their room. Dreaming in Cuban, dissolving into one another, making love, whitewashed walls. It goes it is so graphic, I'm not even going to read it. It's miserably graphic. 
miserably graphic. Let me tell you what you're doing if you don't vote for this. You are next year, come August, September, and October, you are exposing your children and my children to amoral content that is unacceptable. How long are we going to waver between two opinions? Tenth Amendment, before we say that we, we run on conservative Christian values, here's your chance. That concludes the debate on the CCR. Senator McKean goes adoption of the CCR. If you're in favor of adoption, say aye. If you're opposed, say nay. I, as a parent, I do have it. The report is